Let's have a look at a couple of examples from section 4.4. We start with exercise 24, which is asking us to prove that for all integers m and n, if m mod 5 equals 2 and n mod 5 equals 1, then m n mod 5 equals 2. So as usual, we start our proof by supposing the if part of that statement. So we suppose m and n are integers such that m mod 5 equals 2 and n mod 5 equals 1. By the quotient remainder theorem, which is new to this section, there exist integers a and b such that m equals 5a plus 2 and n equals 5b plus 1. Okay, so as soon as we saw the mod, that quotient remainder theorem should be kind of in our minds as one of the tools that we would need to use. Now we're going to do some algebra, which we've seen come up in other proofs. This sort of middle portion of the proof goes through some algebraic steps. So we look at m times n, and we do our substitution. We expand that out. And then the last step might seem a little bit odd to you because we take that expanded expression that we see in the second step and we rewrite it as 5 times the quantity 5ab plus a plus 2b and then plus 2. Now there's a reason we want to express it in that form, which is that we're trying to prove that mn mod 5 equals 2. So we want to see something of the form 5 times an integer plus 2. So what's left to do here is just to explain why that expression in parentheses is an integer. And the reason for that is we know that sums and products of integers are integers. And so the quotient remainder theorem tells us that, yes, we've shown that mn mod 5 equals 2. So that completes the proof. Let's now examine exercise 37. And this says to prove the following statement. The square of any integer has the form 4k or 4k plus 1 for some integer k. Now before I go any further with this, let me point out that the quotient remainder theorem tells us that if we consider the integers, and we think about the remainder part of that quotient remainder theorem, then any integer could be expressed as 4k, or 4k plus 1, or 4k plus 2, or 4k plus 3. So which of those four categories we fall into depends on what the remainder is when we divide by 4. So this is telling us something um, about squares of integers that they do not fall into all four of those categories. They, they do not have all four possible remainders. They must be of the form 4k or 4k plus 1. And as we go through the proof, we're going to see why that is. So we begin by saying suppose n is an integer. All right, now this proof is going to use a technique that is introduced for the first time in section 4.4. We haven't seen it in chapter 4 until we get to this section. And that technique is called division into cases. And here's the idea behind division into cases. Usually when we're writing a proof, we want to write something that works in general. In other words, we maybe we suppose n is an integer and we want some argument that's going to work no matter what integer n is. Well, sometimes we can't do that. Sometimes our argument depends on other characteristics of, let's say, that integer or whatever the proof happens to be about. So maybe we can write a proof that works for even integers, and we could write a proof that works for odd integers, but we can't write a single argument that applies to both. 
we there's some modification required. That's what exactly what we're going to see here. That we can write very similar proofs, one for even integers, one for odd integers, but they're not identical. So we don't have something that works across the board. So let's look at how we would handle that. So what we do is we just say case one, n is even. And now we're going to make our argument for even integers. And that'll get us halfway to the result we want because that will cover those integers and then we just need something separate for odd integers. So then this proof looks very much like other proofs that we've looked at in these videos. We say suppose n is even by definition of even, then n could be expressed as two times an integer j. Uh, we substitute and we see that yes, that's of the form four times an integer. Okay, so we've done part of what the proof um, requires. We've shown that the square of any even integer has the form 4k. But we haven't talked about the odd integer, so that would be case two. And we're going to see that that's quite similar to the even, but not the same because odd integers, by definition, can be written as 2j plus 1 instead of 2j. Um, so we go through the same steps, roughly speaking. We put our answer in the form 4 times an integer plus 1, which was the other half of what the proof was saying, that the square of any integer had the form 4k or 4k plus 1. So here's how we tie it all together. We can say case 1 and case 2 show that the square of any integer, whether even or odd, must have the form 4k or 4k plus 1 for some integer k. This completes the proof. Okay, let me just, before we conclude this video, I want to address something that you might be wondering about. In case 1 and case 2, in both cases we used n as our integer. In both cases I also used j but in different ways, in case one, I was saying n equals 2j. In case two, I'm saying n equals 2j plus 1. And I also defined k differently in case one and case two. And you might look at that and say, wait a second, we're not supposed to use the same variable over again to mean something different. And so this Proof by division into cases actually is an exception to that because we can think of each case as sort of its own self-contained proof. And so it's okay when you get to case two to think of it as you're kind of resetting and it's okay to use the same variables again in case two as you did in case one. You don't have to, but you do have that option and in some ways you might want to use them in the same way to make it easier to sort of look at the two cases side by side and 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 see how similar they are um but i wanted to make that note because it is important in general that we not you know use x to mean one thing at the start of the proof and then use this x to mean something else later Division into cases um, does allow that. Um, I hope you found this video helpful. I'll see you in the next video.